Hi guys, welcome back to Sani's Journal. So today, I am going to be reading The Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus by Dusty Bowling, Chapter 8 and Chapter 9. So let's begin. Chapter 8. Behind Stagecoach Pass, at the center of the dirt trail where Billy and Fred lug around, an endless stream of screaming children stands a mountain. It's a tiny mountain. Well, maybe mountain is too generous a word for it. It's more of a hill. A mighty hill that desperately wants to be a mountain. But a hill, nonetheless. I like to walk down Main Street in the early evening as the air starts to cool and the sky turns colors I've never seen before. I stop for a quick visit with Spaghetti, the poor mutant llama. Spaghetti, who under understands how it feels to be ostracized by the other kids. If no one is in the soda shop, Henry might be sitting outside on the front porch in one of the old rocking chairs. He always waves at me and says, Good evening, little Avon. I pretend to be captivated by something way off in the distance as I pass by Bob at the gold mine, careful not to make eye contact with him though a trail winds around the hill. No trail goes up the hill, so I navigate around cactuses that look like ping pong paddles and giant troll doll hair to get to the top, watching the ground for scorpions and rattlesnakes. The soles of my shoes pick up lots of little cactus needles as I walk, and mom has to dig them out with tweezers when I get home. At the top of the hill stands an enormous, Saguro cactus. It's probably as tall as about 10 of me, standing one on top of the other. It has seven impressive arms reaching up to the colorful evening sky. Show off. Dad says the saguro is likely over 200 years old. He had to Google saguros to find that out. I like to sit out. I like to sit on the hard desert dirt and think of all the things that have happened in this Saguro's life. It stood here when Stagecoach Pass was built 60 years ago and when Arizona became a state over 100 years ago. It stood here as a civil war raged on the other side of the country when women were finally granted the right to vote and when Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. Billions of people have been born and have died in its lifetime. And of course, it stood here on the day I was born and will likely be standing on the day I die. I am an entirely insignificant event in the life of this cactus. I try to remember that as the sky darkens and the lights of Scottsdale and Phoenix brighten the earth, millions of lights for people... Millions of lights for millions of people. And then there's just me, sitting in the dirt on a mighty hill, being circled by a poor old donkey and a tired camel. So, after all, did it really matter that the kids at school didn't talk to me? That they probably wished I wasn't there making them feel uncomfortable? That they were afraid of me? It shouldn't have. I didn't want it to, but it did. I decided to spend my next lunch period in the library. I knew I could get there two different ways. The busy route, which went right past the cafeteria, and the quiet route, which went the long way around the office. I opted for the longer, quieter route, anything to avoid more stairs. As I rounded the corner, I nearly tripped over a boy sitting on the sidewalk up against the wall. I glanced down. He was eating his lunch all by himself. I looked away and mumbled, sorry, as I hurried toward the library. As I walked away, I heard him softly say behind me, that's okay. I entered the library and set my bag down on a table. I glanced around. I only saw one other student and a couple of librarians. Most kids probably like to use their lunch period to, I don't know, eat lunch and socialize and all that. I felt a pang of loneliness as I scanned a row of books, searching for an exciting adventure story to take me away. I pulled out a couple of books with my foot and carried them 
between my chin and shoulder to the table. I carefully set them down as quietly as I could. I sat down and opened Journey to the Center of the Earth. Back home in Kansas, my great-grandma had gotten me an e-reader for Christmas. That e-reader was like a revelation for me. No more cumbersome pages. I could just slide my toe effortlessly across the screen to turn the page. But I still liked to put, pick up paper books from time to time because I didn't want to get out of page-turning practice. After all, I couldn't get all my school books on my e-reader. Before I'd finished the first page of my book, I heard a dog barking. I looked around, wondering why a dog would be in the library. I didn't see one anywhere, but I did see a boy watching me from the far side of the room. He looked away when our eyes met. I felt my cheeks grow hot as I turned attention, I turned my attention back to the book. He was probably staring out of curiosity like everyone else. I heard another bark. It seemed to be coming from the direction of the boy. I glanced that way. I still didn't see any dog. But then the oddest thing happened. The boy barked at me. I didn't know whether to make eye contact with him or look away. I didn't know if something was wrong with him, like he was insane and could attack me at any moment, or if he was making fun of me in some completely bizarre way. I decided to go back to my book. I excelled, at I excelled at ignoring people. I read for a couple of minutes before he barked again. Maybe I wasn't so good at ignoring people after all. I got up from my seat and walked toward him. He stared down at his book as I came closer. When I was finally standing in front of him, he slowly raised his eyes to my face, his lightly freckled cheeks blazing red much like mine. I'm sorry, I said slowly, but are you barking at me? I hadn't thought the guy's cheeks could get any redder, but they did. Yeah, he stammered, I'm sorry. Are you making fun of me? Oh no, he barked again. I can't help it, I have Tourette's syndrome. I stared at him. You have what? Tourette's syndrome, he repeated. What's that? The boy cleared his throat, barked, and then said, Tourette syndrome is a neurological disorder that causes involuntary motor or oral tics. He tugged on his messy light brown hair in a nervous way. I couldn't believe it. He had just recited his well-rehearsed explanation of his disability like I had done a hundred times before. The boy looked down from my face to my non-arm area and exclaimed, Whoa! You don't have any arms? In a were you aware of this fact sort of way. His response to my missing arms was so direct I had to smile. I glanced down and shrieked, causing him to jump a little. Oh my gosh, I knew I was forgetting something today. He sat there expressionless for a little while, like he didn't know what to make of my bad joke. How did you lose your arms? He finally asked. I shrugged. I'm always misplacing stuff probably left them in the fridge when i got the milk out of this morning really they could be anywhere he grinned then barked were they amputated for some reason usually people pretended they didn't notice my missing arms at all or acted all weird about it like those girls at lunch yesterday it was a relief to have someone to be so honest about the thoughts in his head i sat down at the table and leaned in close to him he did not lean away from me instead he leaned closer have you ever been to the circus? I asked before beginning my newest story, one I hadn't gotten to try out yet. No. Well, I said, I used to be a trapeze artist. You know what that is, right? Don't they like hang from ropes and stuff? Like acrobats or something? Oh, they do a lot more than that. They, they do all kinds of tricks. Like swinging from the ropes and doing flips in the air before grabbing another rope. They often work in pairs with one person holding the other person and swinging them up in the air or catching them after they've done a flip. Super cool stuff like that. Awesome. He was clearly impressed. How did you do that with no arms, though? Did you, like, use your legs like a monkey? No, I used the arms I used to have. His light hazel eyes grew wide. Used to have? I nodded. Yeah. You see... 
My partner and I were trying out this new routine. I was going to flip three times in the air before he caught me by the arms, but by the time I needed to do such an amazing stunt was just too much. When he caught me, I closed my eyes and breathed in deeply for drama. When he caught me, my shoulder sockets came loose and arms tore right off. He gaped at me. What? It was awful, I went on, him just hanging out there, holding some arms, blood showering the screaming audience. It was all over the news. Didn't you see it? We couldn't sit. We continued staring at each other like we were in a contest to see who would blink first. Finally, he grinned a little, then a lot. Then he started laughing. You're totally joking, he said, and laughed even louder. I was happy he found my story funny. Keep it down, Connor, a librarian said as she walked by with a stack of books. This is still a library. He smiled at the librarian and then barked at her. As she walked away, he turned back to me, still chuckling. That's Miss Wright. She's super nice. She lets me sit in here during lunch, even though my tics are sometimes really loud. Hardly anyone's in here during lunch, so it's the best part of my day. He tugged at his hair again. So is that what you tell everyone, that your arms were torn off a, torn off in a circus accident? No, that's my newest story. I was born like this. The truth is, totally boring, so I make up stories for fun. I have lots of them if you'd like to hear. He nodded. What's your name? Avon. I'm Connor. I would shake your hand, but he motioned toward my armless area, blinking his eyes rapidly and barking as he did so. But you have horrible warts all over your hands, I said. Connor laughed again. You're funny, Avon. I blushed. My skin is so fair, even the lightest flush to my cheeks makes me bright red. I was probably neon right now. I once googled excessive blushing and find out there's a terrifying name for my condition idiopathic craniofacial arrhythmia or erythema i think i went to school the next day and dramatically announced i have idiopathic craniofacial arrhythma my teacher called my mom out of concern for my health that evening connor blinked rapidly and barked again how long have you been going here just to start, just started a few days ago, I said. My family and I moved from Kansas. Kansas, Connor repeated. Ever see any tornadoes? Sure, we had a storm cellar and everything. A lot of people do. Did you ever have to get in it? Oh, yeah, I said. But luckily, our house never got destroyed or anything. I thought you were going to tell me some crazy story about how your house getting swirled up in a tornado with you in it or something, he said. No, I just tell stories like that about my arms. Though, come to think of it, losing my arms in a tornado would be a great story. I can see how a tornado could suck them right up. I pondered this for a moment. I'll have to think of one later. Cool. I can't wait to hear it, he said. I'd love to see a tornado, Connor jerked his head and barked again. So, why'd you move here anyway? My parents run a place called Stagecoach Pass. We actually live there, if you can believe that. That's so cool, Connor said. Not really. No, it is. I live in an apartment really close to it. My parents took me once, but I hadn't been in a long time. Well, you're not missing anything, I said, so don't worry. Do they still do gunfights? Yes. And camel rides? Yes. And gold? Yes. Cool, Connor said. You should stop over sometime, I told him, since you haven't been there in a while and you live so close. I can even get you a free ice cream cone. He looked uncomfortable at the invitation. Maybe. I don't really like to go out a lot. Oh, okay. I watched him as he continued to blink his eyes rapidly. So, all these things you do, I said, like the barks and the eyes and the jerks and all that, that's from your... Chorits. Yeah, it really sucks. You can't just, like, hold it in, like a yawn. Connor nodded. I can for a little while. I've tried before to act normal just at school and hold in all my tics. It hurts, though. It's really, really hard to hold them in like that. And then, when I'd get home, it would be a tic explosion like you can't imagine. It really upset my mom, and I would be so excited. 
exhausted from holding them in all day and then letting them out all night that I couldn't even do my homework or anything. So I don't try to hold them in anymore. Can you take medicine for it or anything like that? Connor shook his head. I tried some medication and it didn't help. It made it worse, actually, and it made me super tired all the time. It, I could barely get out of bed. Isn't there anything else you could do? Sort of. Connor said, before my parents got divorced last night, or last year, I'm sorry, I was seeing a therapist, but my mom's too busy working now, so I don't go anymore. I frowned. How do the other kids treat you? Okay, I guess. Most everyone is used to it by now. Sometimes I get made a fun I get made fun of. I'll hear kids barking in the hall or where, wherever, and some days when the ticks are extra bad, I hear some of them laughing. One time I heard a couple of kids giggling behind me in class, and when I turned around they were mimicking me, jerking their heads. I cringed. That's terrible. Connor shrugged. I think some of them assume I do it for attention, but I don't care. Most people I meet think I'm doing it deliberately at first. I bit the inside of my cheek. I had thought that too. Do you have any friends? I asked. Connor shrugged again. I've only been here a year. My mom and I moved to the apartment near Stagecoach Pass after we sold our house. So I had to change schools. It's been kind of rough coming to a new school and all that. I guess that's why I spend a lot of time in the library. What about you? I haven't made any friends here, but I had a lot of friends back home in Kansas. I guess because we all grew up together. No one thought I was weird or anything. They were just used to it. Connor nodded. Yeah, I had a couple of friends in my old school who didn't get annoyed by my tics, but I don't really see them anymore now that we are living so far apart. Connor rolled his eyes and blinked rapidly. Has anyone been mean to you? No, not really. They just acted weird around me. You know, like, they don't know whether to look or not. To ask it, ask about it or not. But no one has talked to me like I'm an actual person. Connor nodded in understanding. People act like that around me, too. Except I think it's that they don't know whether to laugh or not. Like, they're not sure if they're being mean or whatever. Some people just ignore it, like that's not even happening. I guess I like that the best. Some people do that to me too, but in my case, it's kind of ridiculous. I said, Connor jerked his head and laughed. Yeah, like my armlessness is something that could slip by someone. I mean, how unobservant do you have to be not to notice that someone doesn't have arms? I'm pretty un observant and it only took me about a minute my point exactly the bell rang for class to start and my happy mood sank i wanted to stay here with connor it was nice to have someone to talk to besides my parents i guess i better go get my bag i stood up from the table and looked down at him i'm glad i stopped in here today connor looked back up at me and smiled me too so next week i am going to be back by reading chapter 10. So, bye!